Hi. So uh, this is a, a video to give a quick overview of uh, my homemade HF software defined receiver. It's based on an STM32F429 discovery board from ST Micro Devices and this has an ARM Cortex M4 processor with hardware floating point and an LCD controller. The receiver is a zero IF design and it has a DDS local oscillator, a 24-bit ADC delivering uh, I and Q signals at 25 kilosamples per second to the processor. This results in a spectrum scope span of 25 kilohertz, the centre of which is marked by this green line on the waterfall display. I've written the software entirely from scratch to satisfy my desire to have a very good signal processing performance and also a user interface that's very responsive and attractive but is not overly cluttered. And all components of this user interface are updating at 30 frames per second. So we've got a highly accurate signal meter at the top that is good to within a dB across the entire dynamic range of the receiver. Uh, there's also a numerical readout of dBm uh, here. The frequency display uh, has a little marker uh, under the decimal point here and this shows the currently selected tuning steps. So I've, this is in upper sideband mode and it's currently set to tune in 500 hertz steps which I find personally best for SSB particularly now most people have an accurate transmit frequency reference. So it's very quick to just tune into SSB stations. So that's set to 500 hertz. If I use the step button, that goes to 1 kilohertz steps, 10 kilohertz steps, 10 hertz steps, which I rarely use, but it's handy if, if an SSB station is slightly off frequency. And then back to 100 hertz. So we've got a VFO button here, and that switches between the two VFOs. Very conventional operation. And if you hold this button, then it will copy the current VFO through to the other one. We've got a mode button here. This cycles through the modes upper sideband, lower sideband, and CW. Upper, lower, and CW. If you look at the waterfall display, we can see that the extents of the DSP passband are accurately marked by a pair of purple lines. See that's showing 0 to plus about 2.8 kilohertz for upper sideband, 0 downwards for lower sideband, and then in CW mode, centered around 700 hertz, we have the lines denoting around it's a, a 250 hertz CW filter bandwidth. So we just pop down to a uh, CW section for a moment. Change the step size to 100. So we have a display button here, and that cycles through the display modes, bottom half of the screen, that are appropriate to the currently selected mode. So this is the waterfall display. If you press that again in CW, we get a, a CW decode text screen. And if we flick again, we, we get through to a real-time FFT display mode. This is useful to see, this is a logarithmic display, covering the full dynamic range of the receiver, so about 100 dBs. So it's useful to see the absolute strength of uh, stations um, 
can be useful for tuning in things like CW, but to be honest, the waterfall display is pretty much the one that gets all the use. It gives you good situational awareness, and it's very quick to find a station and tune into it. So that's pretty much it for the VFO mode, display and step buttons. Finally, we've got um, a shaft encoder here for controlling access to the configuration menu. So if I just press that, it just shows us where we are. If I press that again, we can go down the various options we have. So I can control the, the AGC gain, which is my equivalent to RF gain. There's a normal wide mode that applies to all modes, AM, FM, CW and SSB. There's an IF shift. The waterfall bias is something that rarely needs attention because what I've done, I've, I've linked effectively the RF gain control to the, the offset on the, the colours used in the waterfall. So we can see here that's um, got a nice blue background so it's set just below where the current band noise floor is. If we go back to the RF gain setting, so if I raise the gain, you see the whole noise level comes up. That hasn't done anything to the volume of the signal we're listening to, it's just raised the sensitivity of the receiver and also the sensitivity of the waterfall display. Similarly, if we deafen, deafen it down, you can still see the signals there, but the noise is very much depressed. So a few more things on the menu. Um, whether you want the horizontal scroll of the FFT enabled, I like it on, so as we tune, the signals track rather than smearing, uh, which I don't like, so this is, this is quite pleasant to tune. Some settings there to do with the impulse noise recovery of the AGC. The DDS reference multiplier, you can change that if you if you do run into any spurs that are as a result of the DDS local oscillator, then that can be used to, to avoid them. But in most cases you don't run into spurs within the amateur bands. We've got FMD emphasis on or off. To be honest, you need that on all the time for FMD modulation. And then just the code version at the bottom. So that's it for the configuration menu, and I leave it in RF gain mode all the time, so during normal operation, a quick tweak of the menu knob will adjust the RF gain. So overall, the performance of this receiver I think is exceptional um, for the money, uh, the cost of components. The adjacent channel performance is superb. The filters that I'm using have an 80 dB stop band, um, which you know, is is very, very, very strong rejection of signals either side. Uh, the bass response of the receiver is very good because because of the steep skirts on the the SSB filter, you can place the VFO position quite close to well, it's a, it's a, around a hundred hertz uh, away from zero. So that's that's a very good bass response. And the AGC, I've put quite a bit of effort into the AGC, so it's got no overshoot on strong or sudden signals and more signals and also as I've mentioned before it's got a recovery from impulse noise which otherwise can you know force the AGC right up and then you might have a, a one or two second recovery from that so this doesn't suffer from that at all so it's nearly done a few features to add like non-volatile storage of parameters but I've been using this as a daily receiver since Christmas uh, there are very few things missing from my point of view things still to add are a notch filter and uh, possibly an RTTY decoder uh, but that's pretty much it hope you enjoyed watching